when we started, it was in response to people asking for our seaweed. You know, we'd give some to friends and they'd use it on their gardens and find it was pretty good. And then friends would tell friends. So really, we just decided, do we want to brew for other people or not? So we sold the kids' inheritance, moved out to the beautiful Hauraki Plains and um, lived in the back of a shop <laughs> with no running water. Well, no running hot water, no shower, no nothing. We were the filthiest people in Paidu. And then, of course, once we were set up, um, farmers started coming in and, and horticulturalists. So that started another complete different phase, uh, a phase where we focused very much on research. And Once we began brewing for people for whom their land is their living, that was an entirely different cup of tea. We had to research the efficacy on these monocultural commercial growing systems. You become educated, you know, you learn heaps about soil health, you know, and how, well, if we have healthy soil, we sure don't need the chemicals. We do not need the chemicals. We work with a range of partners for research and development, funding from Callaghan Innovation, working with Auckland University, Waikato University, Lincoln University, WinTech, Plant and Food Research, PCTI, the list kind of goes on. We're really collaborative and open and wanting to, yeah, really share knowledge to develop the, the knowledge that our country has. I think uh, for years probably seaweed's been um, a little bit undervalued and probably poo-pooed <laughs> in a lot of situations. So it's really exciting now meeting scientists who love seaweed. We're like, oh yes, you know, you guys are awesome. And it's validating what we've been doing for 25 odd years. Makes yeah. us feel fantastic, yeah, that we're not the only weirdos out there doing something with seaweed, so that's cool. The blue economy is making sure first and foremost we look after our ecological resources and our oceans, but secondly, being able to extract value from them. So making sure that we can actually make good businesses that are sustainable, but first and foremost looking after the resource that's sustainable too. The seaweed of course comes up on our beaches, it's, it's collected sustainably by our harvesters. We never take all of the seaweed. They'll clean, dry, uh, put it into fadges for us. We get shipped up, up to Poidal here. And from here our guys go about the quality control checking. We mill it down specifically depending on which brew we're doing. And then from there our, our, our brewers take care of it and, and skim and stir it every day, um, up to three months. And then, um, yeah, there's a little bit in between that I can't tell you about in regards to the secret herb of the spices, but that, that happens throughout the whole three months there. Yeah, there, there actually is a lot within and it's not simply grabbing a bit of seed from the beach, chucking an old drum, forgetting about it and voila. Sustainability for us starts from the beach right through to the barrel for our products, right through to the farmers that we spend time with. I look at how it's trendy to be sustainable, you know, and that word is just, you know, for us it's a lived reality. It's not something that's an academic kind of a thing. It's a lived reality. If it's not sustainable, we won't do it. You know, we won't do it. A successful business and respect for the environment are not mutually exclusive.